Hello, and welcome to the weekly Azuqua Tips and Tricks webinar. I'm Phil Ramey, one of the customer success managers here at Azuqua, and today we're going to be covering the real-time monitoring of Slack using Slack's outgoing webhooks feature. So first, to get started, let's take a look at our Flow dashboard. So here we are in Azuqua. The Flow dashboard is where you can see a representation of all your flows here as cards with the titles and you know whether they're active or not, as well as uh, their executions and when they last ran. So what we're going to do here is actually we're going to start a new flow. And we're going to take a look at Slack. Whenever we're starting a flow, the first thing we're doing is designating an event or monitor. This will trigger the flow and allow it to execute when certain conditions are met. So for Slack, we have one monitor or event set up, and it's monitoring for a new message in a channel. So whenever a new message is in a channel, a the flow will start uh, and execute. You'll see we just pick the name of the channel here, and then we'll have these fields, text and timestamp of the message, as well as some information about the user that we can then use throughout the rest of our flow. The thing with monitors, though, such as this one here, is that they just run on a periodic basis for the most part, in this case, five minutes. And what we've heard from customers is that occasionally they want a more real-time integration with Slack. It's a communication medium. In some cases, uh, people are going to expect a more, oh, uh, you know, more immediate response uh, when they sort of post something into Slack. And so there's a scenario that uh, we'll sort of talk about here, which is one where Someone posts a message into a specific channel that has the uh, a project ID of some sort in it. And in this case, what we want to do is execute a flow that looks up the project ID and responds with some information about the project. So that's one where you wouldn't necessarily want to wait for the next time the monitor runs in order to return that information to the user. You would want to actually have that flow execute immediately, look up the information, and respond. So that's sort of the, the basis of, of why it, it may be of interest to you to implement this outgoing uh, webhook method that allows for real-time uh, monitoring of Slack. And so this is what we kind of look like here with our standard monitor. And what you'll see is as we build it, we're, we're going to use our HTTP channel uh, actually as well. So first, though, what we need to do is jump over to Slack. Uh, there are some configuration that we need to do in uh, the integrations with Slack. So let's go ahead and go to the Slack app directory. This is uh, slack.com slash apps, where there's uh, different uh, ways that you can integrate and, and uh, configure. But so what we're going to do is go to our configuration page here in Slack. And then we're going to go to custom integrations. Under custom integrations, this is where you'll see uh, the option for the outgoing webhooks which allows us to get data out of Slack in real time. That's exactly what we want to do in this scenario. Go ahead and click on that. And then we'll choose to add a configuration. Go ahead and click this again. There's some information here about using the outgoing webhooks. And then uh, one of the big items of interest to us is the outgoing payload and responses. Uh, what this is indicating is this is the information that uh, when the conditions that we set up, that we'll be setting up shortly here in Slack are met, this is the information that will be sent to your flow. So you can get uh, a token as a way to authenticate that it is actually a message coming from your Slack integration. There's information on the team, the channel, the timestamp, and, and the user as well as the uh, text of the message. And so for our, our uh, simple scenario here that we're going to integrate uh, set up, uh, we're going to be interested in the token, username, and text. Those are the three values that we're going to use. And so if we continue scrolling down, what we'll see is our settings for this outgoing webhook integration. So we can choose to listen just on a specific channel or for specific trigger words. Uh, additionally, as, as well as both combined together. In this case, we're just going to be uh, listening for updates to our uh, Tips, Tricks uh, webinar channel, Tips and, Tips and Tricks webinar channel. So any messages here will essentially trigger our flow. The uh, information here, this is the token that we'll be using to 
authenticate that the flow is being executed by our Slack integration. So let's go ahead and copy that information. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our flow. So as I mentioned, in order to set this up, rather than using our Slack monitor, we're going to use our HTTP channel. By using this, we're going to be able to make our flow executable by an API call. So what's going to happen is when those conditions are met in Slack, it'll make a call to this flow with specific data in the, in the body of the message. And so this is where we set up the fields that we want to take in from Slack and use in the rest of our flow. So what we talked about was using the token, username, and text. Very important that these field names match exactly as what we saw on the Slack web page. Um, otherwise, the information won't actually come through. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is use one of our functions, the continue if function, in order to verify that the token matches what we're expecting. This way, there won't be any, uh, any unexpected requests getting processed. There, QS, yes. OK. And then uh, just for our demo, demo purposes, I'm also going to verify that the username is uh, Phil, which is my username. And then we're just going to simply reply back to Slack. Uh, as I mentioned before, a scenario with this could be actually taking the text of the message and then parsing the information out of it to look up in other systems and then respond back to Slack with additional details. In this case, I just want to show you setting up the scenario itself, sort of the beginning and the end. And then uh, you know, someone on our team would be happy to work with you on the steps in between if you need any assistance. So let's uh, pick our Slack channel now. And what we're going to pick is sending a message to a channel. So we're just going to pick the tips and tricks webinar. We're just going to reply back in the same thread. There's a couple other options here, whether you send as a bot or not, and then also whether you unfurl the URLs. This is a um, Unfurling is where you'll see in Slack sometimes if someone posts a URL in a message, it will sort of expand it and give you a little bit preview of the information. Actually, you know, I want to do one other thing here. Let's just be a, uh, a little bit sort of responsive here with what someone's looking for. Let's also say we only want to respond if someone posts the message uh, integrate. So we're going to use some more of our functions, string functions here, to verify that. The text of the message includes the word integrate. What the match function does is check whether this value in the expression is included within the string and then returns a positive character number if, if it's found. Otherwise, it returns a negative one. So we're going to use another continue if. And check that the result's not equal to negative one. If it was negative one, that means the the message doesn't include the word integrate. So only if it includes integrate will we respond to the user with the following message. And so we'll save that flow. And what you'll see is whenever we post a message, then that has the word integrate and it's from me, we'll respond with the message you should check out at Zuqua. So let's go ahead and save our flow and turn it on. And let's give it a little message. So now we'll go back to our flow dashboard. And one of the cool things about starting a flow with the HTTP channel I mentioned is that you can call it um, via API. And so if you're on the foundation plan you'll, or above, you'll have the API access option here. And you'll be able to uh, have a few different access options to call the to call the flow. We'll pick from a trusted server. Save that. And then we have the URL here to communicate with that. And so we'll take this URL, 
we'll go back to our Slack, and this is where we designate the URL that should be called by Slack whenever this is uh, conditions met. So in this case, a new message being posted to Tips and Tricks webinar. Let's go ahead and save that. And now, now that we've set up this uh, outgoing webhook integration, if we go back to Slack, what you'll see here is that I've added an integration to the channel called outgoing webhook. That's the name, default name there. But now you can see that the integration is actually set up with this particular channel. So let's go ahead and post a message here. integrate with Slack and we'll hit enter and then immediately what you'll see is that the uh, Azuka bot or a Slack bot and might be in your case or whatever you choose to name your bot will respond and say oh you should check out Azuka because that's a message that we sent up again for your scenario this could be looking up some information from a project management uh, piece of software um, or that sort of thing you know you could easily see setting up oh what's the next action item for project one or something along those lines, and then it could respond to you with that information straight from Slack uh, via this outgoing webhook. And you see the immediate response that occurred here, which is uh, really great and responsive for you. So that's how you can use outgoing webhooks in Slack to have real-time monitoring using Azuqua and executing different aspects of workflow. Um, sort of an additional option uh, to the uh, polling monitoring that's built into the Slack channel on Azuqua. If you have any questions on implementing this, feel free to reach out. There's a chat icon here in the bottom right-hand corner. Just click that. That'll uh, go to our customer success team, and either I or one of my colleagues will be happy to help you out in getting this set up. Hope that you um, enjoyed this Tips and Tricks webinar. Again, we're here every Friday at 11 AM Pacific, and we're here to help you out. So just feel free to reach out. Thanks very much.